Hello world, welcome back to another Pico CTF 2022 write up video. In this video, we'll be walking through the binary exploitation challenge buffer overflow three or 300 points. Let's get into it. Do you think you can bypass the protection and get the flag? It looks like Dr. Oswald added a stack canary to this program to protect against buffer overflows. You can view source here and connect with it using this. Okay, so we know we're dealing with a canary and all a canary is, is it's just a value that's inserted between the stack and the troll data of the program upon execution. And it's just there to inhibit any kind of stack overflow from happening. So we're probably gonna have to get around it in order to solve this challenge. But I've already downloaded the source code for our convenience, of course. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So at the top here, we have buff size 64, flag size 64, and canary size four, okay? Here's our win function. It opens flag.txt. All right, global canary vuln. Let's go ahead and scroll down to main. Okay, so first it reads the canary. So we need to bypass that, of course. And then it reads vuln. And if you come up to the vuln, it even has a overflow check here. So if the canary doesn't match the global canary, then it's gonna detect that we are overflowing the stack. So we don't want that. But that being said, the canary and buffer are being defined up here. So yeah, and it looks like we can set our own buffer size. Huh, all right. So let's go ahead and start looking at, you know, the executable itself. Uh, let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so we need to actually create a canary txt file. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if we run vuln, okay, let's say, Four, and then let's just go we it looks like that didn't give us anything so we're gonna have to figure this out another way we have to overflow that canary we have to override it so how can we determine how many a's we need or you know the offset of a's we need in order to overflow the canary well let's go take a look at cutter and see if we can get any kind of a better read on the situation with it all right, I've got cutter loaded up. Let's go ahead and go to the main menu and I mean the main function, sorry. And yep, here's read canary, here's vuln. Let's go into vuln because we need to overflow the canary and the buff variables. To find the offset between the canary and the buffer, we need to find the difference between their addresses. At the top here, which is really nice in cutter is that it gives us all the relevant variables that are being established in this function. So whatever, like say buff relates to this address. However, that buff may not be our buff. It could just be a regular buff. It could be our buff, but what we need to look for is where it's actually loaded onto the stack or into another variable, EAX or something like that. So we're going to find that at the bottom probably. And actually we can come over in the decompiler and we notice our global canary is right there. And I did not mean to double click it, but here's mem CMP. So if we scroll up, we can see that the global canary is being pushed onto the stack and then loaded from the stack with S1. Okay. And then that's getting, whatever's in S1 is getting pushed onto the stack. And then it's being compared to the global canary that we have. So what is S1? If we come back up here, S1 is EBP minus OX10. Okay, so there's our first value. There's our global canary. Now we need to figure out our buffer. Now the buffer and the global canary are right next to each other. So if we come up, we actually see there's a void buff comment. Don't ignore the comments. The comments can sometimes tell you things that you wouldn't otherwise know. So when we're pushing EAX, it's referring to our buffer variable and it's loading into EAX whatever's in var underscore 50. So var underscore 50 must be the buffer we're dealing with. And as you can see here, that's EBP minus OX50. Okay, so we have OX10 and OX50. Now we need to find the difference between the two in order to find the offset we need to overflow our canary. So let's go ahead and close out a cutter and we'll come into Python and we'll do OX50. 50 minus OX10, and we get 64. So we need to overflow with 64A. So let's go ahead and start composing our exploit. And we already know what our canary is because we set it to flag. Of course, 
their canary on the server will not be flagged. We'll have to figure that out later. We'll clear that. And now let's go ahead and GDB it. Let's just try running it with say, you know, 68. We have our canary, but let's try putting a faulty canary in instead and just see what happens. It says stack smashing detected, canary value corrupt. We don't want that, right? But if we put in the right canary, so flag, then we won't get that message. So remember, if we overflow with the wrong canary, we get the stash smashing detected message. If we overflow with the right canary, we won't get that message. Now I want you to show you something else too real quick before we actually continue with the overflow process. If we run, let's say the buffer size is 65, okay? And we put our A's in and we put a G in, right? Even the starting letter, we'll get the stack smashing detected message. But if we do R and we do, you know, 65, of course, and then all those A's and then F, we won't get that message. As long as the characters match the order of the canary, like how it is correctly written, we can use that as a kind of a brute force mechanism in order to brute force what the canary is, which will be important because we're gonna have to do that in order to figure out what the canary on the server side is. But regardless, let's just go ahead and continue with the overflow. So we know that our canary works with normal input, of course. So all we need now is to overflow to the win function. So why don't we go ahead and just create ourselves a pattern. All right, and then we're gonna do run, and then, you know, our usual, let's see, we have 100, so that's a 168. Then we want our A's, and then flag, and then we want our new pattern here. All right, we broke. And as you can see, our, our EIP register is overflowed, so we can find the offset there. Sixteen. So, in order to get to the win function, we need sixteen more padding characters, essentially, right? Now, all we need is to find the address of our win function. So, let's go ahead and disassemble win. Scroll up, grab the first address, and we'll do from pwn import star p32 address, boom. All right, so we should have all the components we need to successfully overflow and get our flag. So why don't we go ahead and do that? We'll do the usual standard input method. Now at this point, the first value that we put in, the buffer length doesn't matter. It'll work the same. It only matters for when we're trying to figure out what the canary is. Because if we set a buffer too high or too low, it's just going to not tell us anything. It may give us the same smash stack message, but it won't tell us, okay, now where's the flag in case we do have the correct canary. Let's go ahead and echo. We want our A's. Then we want our canary. And then we want our B's. And then we want our win address. Now we need to go ahead and throw a new line there, right? So it can read our input properly. And we need to do, let's just do 200 and then backslash in. Okay. Now if we run that, there we go. It works locally. Okay, now comes the fun part. We need to actually figure out what the canary is server side. I'm not gonna write the script from scratch. I already have it written up for us just to save some time so this video isn't too long. But here I have a couple control variables. I have debug equals zero. We actually wanna set that to one for this. And we're gonna go ahead and leave solve as one. And basically if debug is enabled, then we're just going to do the local exploit. And if solve is one, then it's also going to solve it. So it's going to complete the whole exploit for us. And as you can see, I already have that set up and I'll kind of go ahead and walk through really quickly what this all does. So when content quiet just kind of silences the own library output so that it doesn't get in the way of what we're looking at. 
We're going to loop from one to four because we're brute forcing the canary and the, we know the canary's length is four. Right? Because if we come back here, canary, canary size, canary size is four. Then we're going to loop J through zero to 255. And what that is, is it's all the possible basic ASCII characters. The canary could be anything. So we want to make sure we cover any character, even if it's unreadable. Then of course, you know, here's the debug check. And then so basically this is that first line of input, right? Which is asking for the buffer size. Remember, we want to get the exact size. So what I did here was 64 is, of course, the number of A's offset that we have. And then plus I, which is why I started the I range at one, is you're adding the length of the canary onto the total buffer size. In Python 3, you didn't have to do this in Python 2, but in Python 3, it gives an annoying warning message about it's reading bytes instead of strings. So I made sure to go ahead and encode everything so that it's in bytes so it doesn't fuss at us. And I actually had to do that because it actually didn't work if I didn't have it encoded in bytes. It worked for part of it, but not all of it. So that's all that this does. It just converts it to a byte height, a byte array, essentially. And then that's the second line of input. So we're just saying send this line after the second prompt. And this is six, send that line after the first prompt. And this is, of course, our 64 A's plus our canary plus whatever we think our next canary value is. And we, of course, start with an empty canary because we don't know what it is. Down here, we check to see if that string smashing or byte string smashing is not in the output, which we know that based off of the error message it gives us. I wonder if I can scroll back up here and show it. Right here, back smashing detected. It's just gonna check for that smashing string inside the output. So if it's not there, then of course, we're going to add to our canary character J and then we're gonna go ahead and print it out just so we can see if it's working as it goes along. And then if we have solve enable, it's gonna brute force and then immediately solve it for us. Okay, so we're gonna get the canary and then we're going to solve it with the canary we got. Now, of course, if you have solve as zero, then it's just going to brute force the canary. We can test this locally, obviously, to make sure it kind of works for us on our end before we run it on the server. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Let's go ahead and clear. Oh, well, actually, let's get out of GDB since we won't be needing that anymore. Let's clear and then we'll just run our exploit. I believe I set it up for debug. Yep. OK, so notice it builds flag and then check it out it actually will spit out the flag because it, you know, it prints out everything on solving it. OK, so we know this conceptually works, right? It rebuilds the canary for us and then submits that canary with the rest of our exploit to the server. Now all we need to do is set our debug value to zero. And then we can just run it again. Now, this will take a little bit more time just because it's connecting to a server. So I'll get back to you when it's finished. All right, y'all, it finished executing and I had to actually break it and restart it because I forgot to change my port number to the new instance that we launched for the challenge. But all you have to do is change this port number and I have it set as a variable. So it changes it in all locations, of course. And as you can see, our canary ended up being bird. And then it ran that, you know, it ran our exploit our full payload with the correct canary embedded in it. And it gave us our flag. Static canaries are bad. So that just means that you need to make sure that your canary is randomized every time. That way you can't guess it like we just did. And that's it for this video. I know it was a long one, but if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Turn on post notifications to get regular injections of cyber content directly into your feed. Check out our Patreon, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Links in the description box down below. And leave any feedback or questions in the comment section down below. This is Almond Note. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.